Hello everyone, my name is Prudence Wansa and we are at the office of the Chief Administrative Secretary Ministry of ICT, Nadia Hamed Abdallah. We will be engaging her on matters youth affairs, uh, the programs that the government has for the youth and the opportunities that lie therein. We will also be talking about an initiative that she will be recently launching, which is the uh, hashtag Kenya Nimimi. So, Sties. Thank How you. are you? I'm good. I'm Can good. you How introduce you? yourself? Uh, well, as everyone knows, my name is Nadia Ahmed Abdallah, but most people call me Nadia Abdallah. I from I'm mean from the Ministry of ICT Innovation and Youth Affairs, the Chief Administrative Secretary. Um, as people know, I'm actually the youngest in Kenya, so that's an added advantage. Yeah. But I'm very pleased to be here. Yes. So. It's been 11 months since yes. your appointment yes. as the CIS Ministry of ICT. How has it been? Um, I think it's been good. The transition has been good. The experience, um, the opportunity to work with a very fantastic cabinet secretary like Mr. John Mushero, um, who is actually my mentor, I would say, not even more than a boss. And I've managed to learn a lot of things that happen in the government, government programs, how things work for the youths, and just technology as a whole. So it's, it's a learning experience. But of course, stressful once in a while, but it comes with the job. I'm a youth myself, and I've been on the other side of the bench before coming here, now 11 months later. And one of the things that I know when I was on that side is there was a hunger for uh, opportunities. Um, there was a deficit of um, me feeling like as if the programs for the government are not for young people. But now being in this position and I've learned uh, about the different things uh, in the programs, I realized that actually government youth programs are tailored for young people. Uh, sometimes the issue is that young people either they do not know about it or maybe the terminologies that are used are very hard. Or even, you know, Vijana, proactiveness. Mm, yeah. So that's what drives me. Uh, the fact that I'm going to inform them, I'm going to, with the officers, to tell them this is there, and just to teach them that, you know, it's not always about a white collar job. We can be entrepreneurs, creatives, artists, whatever it is, as long as you know what you want, consistency and moving forward is the key. So the first thing that, of course, we are doing is, I'll tell you the affirmative funds. And personally, I've been part and parcel of that. Um, just last month, I handed over a new truck to a youth from Tarakanithi who yeah. does um, agro, what is it called? The easy chakula, mm -mm, chakula ya mifugo. I don't know what it's called, but yeah, chakula <laughs> mifugo. So he used to um, rent out a truck to transport from Tarakanithi to, yeah. to the city or whatever. But then he went into the funds and he actually applied and he got that. So what we're trying to do is we are trying to sensitize young people and give them education about the funds, how they work, and also show them where the opportunity lies. So that's for those young people who are in the grassroots and also who have no, um, how do you say it, have no keen interest when it comes to technology. But then when you look at technology as well, you have, like for the Ministry of ICT, we have the Ajira Digital Platform. Yeah. Um, whether you go to ajiradigital.go.ke and you find that this during this COVID-19 time, there have been a lot of free programs that are happening. Personally, I'm registered to Ajira Digital myself because... You know, before telling other people about it, you need to have first-hand experience. And I can tell you that it's a way where government is trying to really bridge the gap between, you know, the unemployed, uh, unemployed and those who lost their job during this COVID-19 time. There are success stories about it, I've seen, mm -hmm. and I've heard. Young people are now earning money through these trainings, and you know, we also have like links where they can now work even outside of the country. Then you have programs like KYOP where personally I remember after COVID coming in, um, the program had to stop because of COVID. But then I remember we, we took, I think, two weeks and we went around to check for the COVID-19 measures, if these master craftsmen have those measures within them mm -hmm. so that we can now bring back the young people to go get trained. And why is it unique? It's because KYOP is an initiative between the government and World Bank. And it's a six months training where one month young people are trained on life skills and then the other five months on the different things, whether you want to be an entrepreneur, you have an enterprise. So, you know, stopping it also stops young people from getting their welfare and everything. And uh, once we saw that the COVID measures were put into place, mm -hmm. we now re 
we brought it back and young people have now gained um, experience from it. So what are you doing as a ministry to yeah. make sure that the information on these mm. various government projects yeah. are able even to reach the youths while they were machinani. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the first thing is, of course, government, uh, government to government synergy. You know, we're working very closely with our, our RC, regional coordinators, our county officers, our directors. You know, we're working with everyone and the officials so that we are able to tell them they need to reach the young people. But then, other than doing that, also, we came up, now I came up, mm -hmm. uh, with the Kenyan Mimi Initiative. Yeah. Because we realize sometimes young people really need a substantive platform to get all the information. And so basically, when I created the Kenyan Mimi campaign, it was a mechanism that I wanted to use to disseminate information much easier for young people to understand because I speak the language mm -hmm. so they'll be able to easily understand from me uh, rather than them going around and trying to look for it and the unique part of what we are doing is the fact that we partner with the different um, stakeholders and the different officials that we have and wherever we go somewhere we take these officials so that they can now give civic education mm -hmm. about the programs that are there so that young people can take up and from what you've seen the uptake of these different initiatives have actually been very good of course slow because of COVID mm -hmm. and the fear of young people you know maybe contracting the the virus or this but it's a bridging process that is going on you know, there are a lot of, uh, of course, issues and a lot of reasons. Yeah. One of them being young, people, young people's frustration with maybe things not working out according to what they want. Um, there's also peer pressure and influence. Then you also have social media that contributes a lot. But then there's also that issue of the young person has reached to that point of just giving up. You know, and it has a lot to do with issues of mental health um, and our mindset and value system. And that's why I'll go back again when you look at Kenya Nimi, the way we've drawn the structure, we have a pillar called values. And that pillar is supposed to factor now these issues. What are we trying to do? We're trying to now reinstill back the values in young people mm -hmm. in terms of um, love, as in, are we love, do we love one another in terms of young people? Are we united or are we just going to work together? Then when it gets to the general election, we're now going to backstab one another. Mm -hmm. And are we peaceful? in terms of do we understand that peace and cohesion is very important when it comes to the socio-economic and political sphere of the country. And so we're trying to really partner with developing partners and also other government agencies so that we can now create a structure that will now help us give education to these young people. But then how are we doing that? How will we be able to tackle these things? This is through now the ambassador system that Kenya Nimimi has. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to come up with an ambassador system where young people will pick young people from every county to be our ambassadors. And from that, we'll first train them and give them civic education on why do we want this platform? And take an example, if it's the coast, we know there's issues of drugs, we know radicalization is there, yeah. teenage pregnancies. And so that is why it was very important for us in Kenya and Mimi to partner with UNFPA. Because when it comes to teenage pregnancy and rape and all these cases, they are really the chairs and, you know, they're the drivers when it comes to developing partners and that. And so we want to come up with programs that will be able to factor those in and will be able to include that because... It's a point in time where, as a government, we are now making young people understand that the responsibility lies within themselves. And if there's something that they don't like or they're not happy about, now it's them to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're looking at a sustainable model. What do I mean by that? Because it's broad. I mean that, um, first of all, Kenya Nimimi doesn't have an ending date. Mm -hmm. Secondly, Kenya Nimimi is for the youth. What do I mean by that? As much as... I'm the one who founded it. And, you know, I, I had to go through, like, my CS to advise me on what to do. Mm -hmm. From me, I'm now handing it over to the young people. You see, a lot of times, maybe programs are created, and we are just telling the young people what we think they can do. But Kenya Mimi gives you a platform for you as a young person to speak on what you think works in the government, what you think doesn't work, mm -hmm. uh, on matters of health and issues, and also on environment and conservation. Mm -hmm. And so that's why for us, the ambassador value system mm -hmm. is very important because we personally have handpicked, we are working on that, I've handpicked ambassadors. Then what we're going to do, we want to train them. So you see, when you give information to a young person, that's a sustainable approach towards 10, 20, 15 
years from now because they will now see how much it, they value it and how much it works for them and they will champion it. So our, our hopes are that our ambassadors will be the ones to help us sustain this uh, through community engagement because we are looking at not only doing it on online platforms but once everything settles, even with small groups, doing it through community engagements, engaging the elders in the different uh, communities but also engaging those grassroots young young people it doesn't matter whether you went to school or not kenya mm -hmm. just serves as a platform for you to just raise whatever it is you want to say and it doesn't have to be a right thing yeah. you know but we are very cautious because we want kenya Mimi to be used on a positive light because we are trying to reinstill back that to in young people yeah. And yeah. i understand that you've been going around trying yes. to talk to the youth about the initiative yes and them also raising their issues yes what what are some of the challenges that mm. you have had the youth speak about yeah what are some of the issues that you have had them talk about yeah. that they are facing i mean the the m top most of course is like opportunities yeah. opportunities and unemployment and that is why i go with my officers i go with my youth officer yedef keop whatever it is i go with them and once they raise that, I now tell the officers to teach them what is there. Because I don't believe in the system of when you go somewhere, you give out yeah. money or you give some. No. Government programs are there for young people. I go with the necessary people that are needed. That's the first one. The second thing that is there, I realize like a lot of young people face a lot of issues when it comes to sexual reproductive health and mental health. And so this is something that we are trying to engage them. First, we want to break the stereotype around mental health because most of the times, what uh, on a mental health, Nikitu, we are westernized. Mm -hmm. But it's actually an African thing and it affects. And then also when it comes to sexual reproductive health, there's a lot of issues on GBV. There's a lot of issues on teenage pregnancies. Um, it's about time the community now starts to engage. So what we found out is that the young people in the community, they have a disconnect. And so now how are we bringing them together? And that is through the merging of developing partners, but also going to Wale Waze mm -hmm. and listening to them. And, and those are the things that help. Yeah. One thing I can say is that our Secretary of Youth was part of the Mental Health Task Force, and the report was out. Of course, there were different suggestions that were given. But also as us, um, we have the youth, uh, what are they called? The Youth Empowerment Hubs and uh, where they have a section in some of the uh, counties um, where they offer psychosocial rooms where you can now go and talk about psych uh, whatever it is that you're affected with and also they have other counseling rooms where you can get HIV advice and everything. So you see these are small and growing progresses of things but also for us as Kenyan and Mimi we are trying to see how we can engage with the different counselors around. Uh, we've managed uh, uh, back then to give free counseling sessions through some of the doctors mm -hmm. um, but we also we also hope that we will engage with more stakeholders so that they can help us in terms of also pushing the agenda of having maybe mental health programs in primary and and high school and you know just it's you know it's a growing process can yeah. I mean something that is here and mental health is also something new not everyone is used to talking about it so the fact that we are still breaking the stereotype is actually a challenge itself and we hope that we can really demystify that as yeah. we go on. I can tell you, I can definitely see the future. Yeah. <laughs> um, I see Kenya Nimimi as a positive mechanism that the government can, uh, will use to engage with young people, to understand how they think um, and to really for us to improve on our programs and improve on our approach and how um, the young people will will take it but at the same time um, I also see it as a way to change the young people's mindset but that comes with young people accepting Kenya and Mimi um, are they of course we've seen we've engaged so far their Twitter conversations on the ground also their conversations mm -hmm. people are excited and they're excited because they're still not sure what is it who is it and most of the time when they ask they say, oh Kenya and Mimi yeah, it's, it's Cass's thing this and that so I think the fact that there is a young person in an executive position then trying to come up with an initiative that is engaging them. It gives them hope and it also makes them feel like, you know what, maybe we can give this a chance. But of course, with every coin, there is a flip side, yeah. which we are, we are hoping that the coin won't be flipped when it comes to Kenya. Because maybe. what the youth of this country need at this time is hope. Yeah. Considering that we have had 
so many young people yeah. graduating from universities. Exactly. You need to come out here and find a very competitive job environment. Yeah, yeah. What you do you advise our graduates yeah. who are yet to still maybe get a job? Yeah. I mean, competitive environment is a normal thing. I, I faced that as well before getting this job. And after I finished uni, I, I didn't have a job. But what did I do? I, you know... I did not know about the funds mm -hmm. or I did not pay attention to them. I felt like maybe I wouldn't benefit, but I had a bit of money that I had saved and I used that money to start up my own company. So I tell young people, oh, I'm telling young people, it's not embarrassing to not have a job um, and it's not embarrassing to have an idea. What's embarrassing is to sit on it and believe that someone else is going to come and help you. Because that is not really what's going to happen. Competitive, competitiveness is healthy. Competition is healthy. Um, struggle is there, but struggle doesn't define who you are. Mm -hmm. So you just have to look within. And I say this a lot. You have to look within yourself. It doesn't matter where you are. I'm a Swahili girl from Old Town. I mean, who would have thought I'll be here today? But because of my consistency and me using my social media platform on a positive light, I was picked and I'm here today. I, I totally understand. I feel us. And I, when I say us, I mean I feel the youth. Right now, social media has so many things. Negative, positive, toxic, you name it. They have it. Um, because of the peer pressure, young people, we get sucked into this idea of fast money, fast life, fast this, fast that, which is okay. Everyone goes through that point in time. But then you have to look at it this way. What are you gaining? So when you're on social media, um, you have a business. Maybe you are selling Korosho mm -hmm. and you are able to have bundles and you are able to access internet. Why not create a page? I, you don't need to be perfect. Just create a page and just monetize. And then if you feel like you still need skills, we have a Jira Digital. I registered for the sales and marketing program. We have that. Go train yourself and see what you can get from there. And then from there you just you move on. But it's also the conversations we have among us youths can we now have conversations of, okay, what do you have? Uh, what do you want to start? Rather than, oh my God, what am I going to uh, wear? What am I going to wear on Friday? Which is fine. You can think about what you'll wear on Friday, yeah. but let's have progressive conversation among among young people. And akuna ibu ikwa wewe unauza mahindi ama unalima. It's normal. Not every young person will be hired, mm -hmm. and not every young person will be innovative in a technological way. Yeah. Kenya ni Mimi is going to be run by young people. I, I really, it's, it's for the young people. Yeah. And I'm a young person as well. So I consider myself part of that bandwagon. So we are the ones who are going to run it. Um, of course, there are measures that we need to place because of discipline, because of reasons of, you know, commitment and everything. You know, you have to. There's a, there's a way you need to monitor and evaluate. But we hope like our, our ambassadors are the ones who are going to champion it. And of course, with our advisors at the back. Um, but um, it, how credible? I think credibility comes with commitment yes. and consistency. And so I don't want to say it will be very credible, but I'll let the campaign speak for itself. Yes, this campaign is being launched uh, in December on next week. And of course, elections are in 2022. Um, of course, there are some people who think maybe this is part of that mechanism, mm -hmm. but it's not. Whether or not I'm still going to be CAS, mm -hmm or not, Kenya ni Mimi is still something that I am going to push forward. It's still something that I need the young people to drive because it is our obligation. Because as young people, we need to take up things, we need to craft up things, mm -hmm. and we need to just take ownership of different mm -hmm. places, yeah. True. So now we can talk about uh, when you will be launching the initiative, Yes. how the event will be like, yeah. and all that. Mm. So the initiative is supposed to be launched uh, on December 7th. Um, the venue is still not yet until my bosses tell me. <laughs> plans, are still <laughs> plans are still underway. But um, yeah, we're just going to have young people come. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, I'm going to share a personal story on why Kenya Nimi came up. Because for me, Kenya Nimi is personal. Uh, being uh, from a marginalized community, I, I needed to drive something that will have an inclusive sound and voice to everyone. And so I'll share with it so that young people can also feel whatever it is that I'm putting in it. Then we'll have young people's perspective, what they think, or what do they feel about Kenya ni Mimi? Do they think it's, it's something that it will never work? Or do they think there are ways in which you can improve? 
Um, you know, our partner is uh, UNFPA. So that shows some credibility as well because, yeah. you know, uh, so they also will come in with their champions. We'll talk about SRHR, why it's important for us to really address the issue of teenage pregnancies, of GBV. I mean, it's a lot. So it's, a, it's going to be a launch where we're having discussions, where we're going to dialogue, and we're just going to see a way forward and create a roadmap to what exactly we want to achieve months later. Yeah, and hopefully you'll be ab we will be able to go to the youths who mm. at who yeah. are at the grassroots level yeah. because you know not every youth still has the access to social Very media. True. Very true. And we are hoping that the Kenyan Immune Initiative mm. will reach every Youth yeah, in this country. I mean, and I don't know if anyone is following me on social media or anything. They'll know I really take pride in going to yeah. the ground. Yeah. I, I do that a lot. And even during COVID-19 time, with the risks that are there, I still felt like I needed to really show young people that, yeah, we're facing a lot of pandemics, but I really have time to come and listen. And I, I do that because I know not every young person will have access to me. I was in Rabai just a month ago, uh, three weeks ago, and I sat with, you know, Waze Wakaya and our villagers and everything together with other uh, young people, and we talked. And you see, the, the, the true essence is of Kenyan Mimi is being able to really sit down with them, the young people, and being able to listen because that's what they what young people what we need is to listen and that's what the government is doing now we are listening to them we are trying to see what they're saying and we want to see how the programs will work for them yeah hopefully i wish you all the best on that and thank you maybe you can also give your final message yeah to the youth. Yeah. yeah so my final message is just um to the youth is that give kenya nimimi a chance in the sense that when we launch it try to learn more about it Try to know what it is. Try to see whether or not it will work for you and how we can also improve. Because at the end of the day, I always tell the young people that Kenya ni mimi, Kenya ni wewe. But one important thing is that Kenya ni sote. So it is our time. We are 75%. We can do a lot. So we just have to have a positive mindset, look at government programs, work with what we have, and just build a sustainable future for our next future generation. So we have been talking to CIS in the Ministry of ICT Innovation and to the Affairs CIS Nadia Abdallah who has been talking about Martin's Youth and the upcoming launch of the Kenyan Mimi Initiative. She has emphasized on the need for the youth to take up the various government programs available to bridge the gap on the high rate of youth unemployment in the country. Thank you so much. My name is Prudence Wanza.